What's up, everybody? Howdy, howdy. We be back. We are back, be pull hyenas. <laughs> it's more of a wolf, but hyenas are supposed to like cackle, uh-huh. supposed to laugh. So pretty much what I do for an hour when we start recording. Yeah, that's that's exactly what. That's how we got the name, dog. <laughs> but yeah, uh, great disc golf happening over the weekend. Amazing. But uh, between Waco and, well, I mean, our tournament that we played, pretty fun time. I don't want to. It was a blast. It was a blast, yeah. <laughs> Had a good time, which we'll get into that later. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It was awesome. Good, a lot of stuff to talk about. A lot. Yeah. Um, first thing, though, I wanted to talk to you about, though, is DGN, how is it working for you? It's... Every, Up to this point. Okay. Fire Stick, good. iPhone, Good. I'm making a disc cave or main cave, whatever you want to call it, in our spare bedroom. And uh, I didn't have an extra fire stick. So I used a Google TV thing that was laying around. Not. Doesn't work. It works. But lots of, I got kicked a few times. Um, I don't want to say buffering, but glitchy. Like yeah. very choppy. Picture is not great. Like. Wasn't good. So all the all these people that have been complaining, and I'm including you in it, because you've you've been using the uh, Android powered stuff around your house, and yeah. it's just not. It's not. It's not it. Fire sticks, man. Fire sticks been incredible. Really, that's the one that works. It yeah. doesn't work on my Roku stick for my TV, but if I my Roku TV in my room, it does work. It is glitchy on the phone too. There's still some things they need to work on. Yeah, the picture in picture. Picture in picture thing's a big one. That's huge. And it's almost like it's fi- almost fixed. I fi- I think it was one round I noticed it where I would close I'd close I'd close out the app and it would stick around for just a little bit longer than normal. And I'm like, "Oh shit." <laughs> Nothing then it would just yeah. go away. I'm like, "No, no, 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 no." Yeah. If you hit the picture in picture thing, it's that's what it does. It sucks it down like it's going to work. Mm-hmm. And then it just it just disappears. It turns into in the the dust. It's gone, dude, right before your very eyes. <laughs> it's like Fuck. Yeah, it's gone. But it does seem like it's trying for sure. Like, yeah. I don't know what that means. <clears throat> I don't know anything about coding or fucking app design, but you know, fix it. Fix that. Fix that shit. We dude. need that to fix. And it shouldn't be, you shouldn't have to like go buy another, like, I shouldn't have to go buy another fire stick to be be able to enjoy my disc golf no dude i don't want to have to get a new phone just to be able to watch disc golf either no yeah, the phone's to... kind of crazy i can see that doesn't make sense to me how it's working pretty flawless on my iphone but your iphone it does not no it works okay i mean but it's still like you know there's some prop which that could just be signal cell signal what the hell are you going to do about that yeah but it could just be that like the glitchiness that they have but it does seem to have still uh still a few bugs in there like also, just I feel like it would be a. It should be simple. I don't know. Once again, I'm just <laughs> fucking stupid. I don't know anything about this, but it feels like you should be able the the easy fixes of like in screen whatever that's called, in screen viewing or whatever. What do you what do you call picture it? In picture? picture in picture? Yeah, I don't know what it's called. Like it, but I'm pretty sure it's called picture. Whatever it is, wherever you close out the app and, and the yeah, picture, it keeps it, going. Yeah, yeah, and the video is still playing. The video player. Uh, that feels like that could be an easy fix. I don't know though. Just, but just as a consumer, wham, yeah, you know. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I've not, I'm, I've been good. I've not been raising too much hell. No. I've been, I've been happy because I've been pretty decent. It's getting warm, and my grass is starting to grow. And as I've said on this podcast multiple times, I like to listen to it while I mow. The old, up until this year, the old, whoever they're using for whatever i don't know if it's isis or who they were using before isis technology but yeah. i could close my phone out and it would i could still hear the audio yeah and i would listen to it while i mowed yeah i'm not gonna be stoked if i can't do that again yeah and i know that's kind of crazy even it's kind of crazy to even listen to fucking disc golf <laughs> but i spend a lot of time mowing a lot every every week. Like my Saturdays, I'm I'm mowing for two to three hours every Saturday. And you want to listen to some goddamn. And disc I want to yeah. I want to if I, if it's during disc golf, I want to listen to it. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that the things we're bitching about too. It's like the most first world problems, but 
still, should, yeah, dude. They should, fix that shit. Yeah, I, I'm okay right now. But Another week, two but weeks. But it's building on you? It's uh, two weeks if I can't listen to it. Um, any, I don't even know if that was offered. Like, I don't, with this new package. Like, I don't know if that was even an offer whenever they raised their prices. Maybe they took that away. But I remember in the old commercials, it showed a guy listening to disc golf while he mowed. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and, yeah. and that's what I did. And I want it. I want it back. Yeah, they should re- we should do a new commercial where it's a guy trying to mow and figure <laughs> turn his phone off and he sets it down. God damn it's quitting playing. Picks his phone up and has to leave the screen on and just set it there angrily on his lap. Just scratch the fuck out of his phone. Yeah. Then his phone drops and he runs it over and mows it into pieces. And then it says Disc Golf Network. <laughs> disc Golf Lives. It used to be better. <laughs> disc, yeah, disc Golf Network. Our shittier app was actually better. Yeah. We need to we need to get it fixed though. Yes, the picture in picture, the audio, <laughs> and why why it doesn't run the same on every yeah every goddamn inconsistent thing. like whatever you call it on every diff yeah on every device device there yeah, we go yeah sure device is the word I was looking for yeah I don't yeah that's a good question and these are all uh, the answers someone uh, a lot smarter than us could have the answers but. They're not fucking here, so we're gonna can you know. We're just gonna whine. We're, we're gonna speculate about it. I'm <laughs> just gonna bitch about it. Dude. <laughs> yeah, that, that, uh, yeah, it's good right now. I'm happy right now. Another I'm not thing. Complain. Another thing. I am. I'm another not. thing. <laughs> I'm not done. Another thing that I think is kind of annoying is whenever you open it, like, I guess there is like whatever tournaments right there front and center. Yeah. But then once you click on it, you have to like go down and look for the current thing that's live. Almost. Yeah. It, I feel like it should be front and center. Well, I, th- I think that's with you having the pro. I, yeah, that's true. I forget you having the pro, you got more options and, and it has those options on mine Fair. too, but locked. I, they're mine, mine are locked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I actually have to scroll through and find the one that's unlocked. And here's, I guess this is another point. Uh-oh. It says all of them are locked on mine. But I know that I pay for one, so I'll select it, and then it'll let me watch it. But it shows it locked. Oh, yeah. So Interesting. Yeah. Just another glitch in the system. They'll fix it. This We're going to have to have someone week hack Week three. Them. Week three. They'll have it fixed by USDGC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll have it fixed by the end of the year. They'll have it fixed by September. Yeah. <laughs> most people have already canceled their scripts. That's the funny thing is most people won't. You know what I mean? Oh, no. No one's going to get that angry. I wouldn't. No. You I'm, know why? Because did you I watch it this fucking weekend? It was amazing. Yeah. And that's all you got, too. Yeah. You got to watch it. But it doesn't mean we can't complain about it. No, we can't. We can, we can complain. My God, we'll get fucking... Picture in picture and fix my damn audio shit so oh, I can mow. son, dude. And I'll be good as gold. I feel you. We, uh, if we could get, like... If we could get someone on it to draw more attention to it, I bet it would be fixed. Like, like Oliver Anthony. Oh shit! Yeah, dude. He's mad. He hasn't. He hasn't wrote a song here lately about how angry he is. But if we could get him to write a song about Disc Golf Network, it would surely get fixed. It would blow up like his last one. It would. <laughs> like fucking the picture. <laughs> picture won't work. <laughs> fucking his little metal guitar. <laughs> yeah. What else? Like, is that what is it called? What is it called? Picture in picture. I don't. Uh, I, I call Are we it even calling it picture. right? No, I don't think that's what it's called. <laughs> I think picture in picture is when you have two different things going yeah. at the same time. We'll pretend but he that, doesn't know. Yeah, I called. guess that would be right. Picture in picture, yeah. yeah. Because you can watch, you can sit there and watch it while I like. I I, I like to live tweet yeah. during the things during the shit tournaments, and I watch it on my phone a lot. So it's really fucking up my Twitter engagement, <laughs> and I can't because you have to like close it completely out. Yeah, and then go on Twitter and. Do your X and then tweet or X and then you gotta exit. You gotta exit. Then you then you gotta exit and then <laughs> yeah. and then uh you have to go back in. It's just it's a pain in the dick to be honest. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah, they'll get it fixed. They will. If not, we'll complain more. <clears throat> but, uh, we'll keep this up every week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're just gonna keep putting picture in picture. Talk about picture in picture. As long as they keep fucking up and as long as you guys keep listening, you'll keep hearing us complain about it. <laughs> Especially me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not as bad as you're y'all. not. But no. honestly, it, it, the main reason I was not as angry is because 
the fire stick and my phone are working. Like, I wasn't having any issues. Like, I, I was good to go, except for the picture in picture. Yeah. And the audio, the being able to listen to it. But, like, the rest of it was fine until I tried that Google stick thing and mm, not working. It, it worked. It's just trash. Yeah. It's very glitchy, very. Got kicked multiple times in the last round. Like, it wasn't good. No. But. Like I said, we're going to watch it regardless. Yes. That's the thing. We're going to pay for it. You want to regardless. go ahead and talk about Waco? Yeah. We'll go ahead and go into we'll that. That was awesome. Yeah. What'd you think? The uh, Burr? Pretty uh, yeah, good. Dude, it was, no, it, yeah, it was it was great. Like, uh, the third round of the FBO I thought was wild. The Kristen went in six strokes down. And, Something like that. And came out five strokes ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> Ella... Fucked that up. She <clears throat> fucked that up. Which a lot of it, obviously, on Kristen because she's just a badass. She's just consistent. She just do what she. That's the thing, yep. right? She will, she doesn't blow up. She doesn't really blow up. Yeah. Her inconsistency is like, oh, she only shot a a nine ninety rated round or something. It's like, <laughs> yeah. fuck. what was it? One of our buddies said something the other day that was funny as hell. I think he said, F, "What FBO <clears throat> is like a series of misfortunes," mm. and it almost. And I don't think he was saying it out of, like, hatred or sexism or nothing else, but it really is. It's like, they all seem to blow up at some time or another. Sure. And there's a couple of them that are very consistent, and I'm talking about Kristen Tatar mm-hmm. and Owns Goggins. Owns Goggins, very fucking Very consistent. consistent. And that's the two that you see at the top of the leaderboard more than anybody else. Yeah. I think Holland Hanley's making a great push to be one of the top players. I mean, she really is, but I'm talking about, I think she's making a great push to be up there at two or three. Yeah. And she's consistent, but she still has those minor blow-ups. And, uh, <coughs> Kristen Tatar is just on a different plane. She really is. She's And the scores show it, and her, the record from last year shows it. Like, her coming in this, her being her first tournament, I was I was a little worried. I mean, I knew she'd play well, but I didn't know that it was just going to be a blowout, especially after two rounds. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, there's a series of misfortunes for everybody else besides her, Kristen Tatar. Yeah, she could just kind of like <laughs> fuck around and st- that last round. It was not boring. No, but it was just like we'll, we'll see. Who gets second place? You it, know, I mean, yeah. just knowing that like, it, it it is it's not as fun to watch whenever you're. I mean, if you've got somebody that you're pulling for that's in a close race for second or something, but like, and I do have certain players I pull for, but I really just want to watch good, like exciting disc golf. Sure, you know what I mean. I yeah. like all the players. I, there's not a there's not a disc golfer out there I don't like. Even the ones that we talk smack about, most of the time we're just joking, but like. I pull for all of them. I like all of them. They're all cool, especially with the FPL. I, I really, I, I dig the vibe of their cards. They seem very positive and everything else. So, yeah, it's, and Kristen also like, like, like you said, it's not that exciting to watch. I think it's like, it's exciting to watch, but like you said, you want to see like a push and pull between two players. Like yeah, the MP, like how like MPO, MPO huh? played this weekend between Luke and and Gannon, but. You watch the last round of FPO and you're just like, I guess I'll just watch this one gal play some fucking badass disc golf <laughs> yeah. and see if anybody nev- can catch her. And there's, I mean, yeah. but but that wasn't even in my head. No, going in, I was just like, well, see how how many strokes is she gonna win? She by? gonna win by? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the bet, right? Like, yeah. it's not betting if Kristen's gonna win. It's betting how many strokes Kristen's gonna win by. That's, and that's that's crazy. That yeah. is fucking crazy. That, not, that's hilarious too. That we're like, it's just not as fun to watch her fucking be really good at, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could be seeing something special. I mean, it really, really could be. I think that, that it's it's just hard for me. I, and I've been on, I've been, I've quoted, I've said this on this podcast multiple times. I think Gannon Burr will end up being the greatest disc golfer so far. Yeah. But it's fast as fast as it's growing and the younger these kids are starting to play and learning and like having the knowledge of the knowledge of disc golf, not even just disc golf, like 
Gannon is fly. very knowledgeable he with the is. frisbee. He is. He knows a lot. Every he, time he speaks, I listen. Yeah. When he's talking about yeah. disc golf because yeah. I'm like, what do you know? Because he's very insightful. He really is. And such the, a young age. Very, yeah. Very smart. Like, yeah. very, very smart. And uh, I just think it's, the people are just going to get better and better for sure. Like, we want to say go. And, the, you know, you got 12 time climb over. I mean, it, that's easy to say go. But it's just like the times of any other sport. It's it, sure. Every sport progresses. Kids start getting better training, better working out, better everything at younger ages as the sport grows and grows. There's no way those football players from the 70s, right? the best football player in the 70s wouldn't hold a candle to a mediocre football player uh, now. Yeah. And people will argue that. I'm sure there's one or two, but I'm talking about prime like prime the prime i'm not saying give those players in the 70s what they can have now like just the training and everything in every sport it's just it's crazy i've dealt with it with my son Mm -hmm. i mean he was getting private training from the time he was you know sixth to seventh great you know what yeah, i mean yeah. and that's the same way with disc golf these kids are getting they, they they're growing up. even when i started playing you couldn't find much instructional video on youtube yeah you could find a few places that maybe recorded like a you know where they stop and have a, a clinic or whatever you could see that you could find that but now man like with overthrow and slingshot yeah. and not only do you have all the training in the world to watch you have multiple different like styles of training like if you have a nearby course and if you just watch bedanza's videos every time you take a shit you're going to be a touring pro in three years (laughs) you know what i mean that's that's not true (laughs) i try i've been trying to watch him and i every time i take a shit and i'm not where the fuck (laughs) yeah i don't actually how did he finish at waco didn't he play waco yeah but i don't know Oh. I'm not a big Bonanza. How do you say his name? Bonanza, yeah. Yeah, right. I'm not a big Bonanza guy. I don't like, watch I, a lot of his videos either. I've actually. watched a few. I watched that one with uh, Gannon Burr and maybe a couple other ones. But oh, I watched one with Edward Robinson. Okay. But yeah, I'm just not not a big. Okay. No, I'm not saying I'm not a fan. I just don't. I don't you follow know, him. No, no, no. You made your statement. We see how you <laughs> feel about him. Our buddy Chris B, dude, he loves him. Yeah, yeah. He watches everything he fucking puts out. No shit. Yeah. Well, he's, I've heard he's very good. Like, I've only seen a couple of his videos and clips, but I, honestly, I couldn't really tell you much about him. But good for him. I don't uh, know where he finished. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> good for him, whatever I happened. Know. Who did finish in first? Who's that? Gannon, the Iceman. <laughs> Is that what he's going by? Nah, that's what I'm calling him. Fuck it. <laughs> the Iceman? Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I, disc golfers. Disc golf is the sport where you need more nicknames. Yeah. If any sport has silly nicknames, disc golf. Has fucking Joe the Frizz Johnson, come on. <laughs> why isn't there more of that? Freestyle Bob. <laughs> yeah, why isn't there more of that in disc golf? Backhand Rob. They're probably definitely like Steady Ed, right? Yeah. You know, they're probably used to be. Oh, I guarantee Backhand you. Backhand Rob. Yeah. <laughs> he just beats the shit out of his wife. <laughs> has nothing to do with Frisbees. <laughs> He's like, I'm actually predominantly forehand. <laughs> <laughs> I smack the fuck out of her with my backhand. Yeah, yeah. I got great backhand for him, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> or his wife's over the black eyes. <laughs> Double black eyes. <laughs> oh, That's shoot. not funny. No. But uh, I'll go ahead and read off top 10 FPO at Waco, though. Uh, obviously, Chris and Tatar, seven fucking strokes ahead of second place. Yeah. Once again, happens. I mean, what, what do you got to say about it? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. She's a... Uh... She's, she's she's back. Re- she's back. Hey, she's back. <laughs> she's back. She's not a thousand rated yet. <laughs> she's going to hit it this year. She's going to hit it. And this I don't year. think she even fucking cares. She doesn't care. She has been quoted as saying that it, she that's not even on her whatever. She doesn't give a shit about the rating thing. That's she, mostly for us. She's back. we just want to see her. We just want to see the first uh, FPO a thousand rated player, and she's definitely going to be. She's uh, after the ratings update, which is today. How did everyone do on the ratings update? Let us know in the comments. Yes, let us know. <clears throat> she uh nine nine nine. She DNF'd on her uh, rating, but so close. 
And there's people on Reddit that are doing the math, and they think that they got it figured out, which they had it figured out before the round that, like, oh, she could have made it to a 1,000 yeah. if she birdies out. I'm yeah, like, they were saying if she birdies out the last three holes, she'll she'll end this round with a blank, <laughs> blank rating, unofficial, and that should knock her up. The, I was like, holy shit. Knock her up. Oh, with, you know what I mean. Is, that, is it crazy? I thought that there was, like, a secret formula that they used, too. I knew that it was all kind of cut and dry, but there was also, like, a little secret spice that they added in there to make Somebody the rating. Somebody knows it. Fucking those guys at goddamn uh, Stat Mando know now that they work for oh, that's PDGA. True. That's probably it. And then they were spilling the beans. They were. Yeah, and that's why Terry Miller and the boys in the booth knew. Yeah. Well, Terry and Val. Um... But yeah, I'll go ahead and Kristen Tatar, first place, of course. Our girl, our favorite girl over here on the podcast, Own Scoggins. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if we've come out and said that, but she's my favorite FPO player, ATM. Yeah. I, well, so. I, I love PP, but. You know, we're a PP heavy podcast. Yeah, but we I, love PP. But right now, dude, Scoggins she's kind of out of the picture for me. Scoggins Are you is, giving up on your I, PP? I'm not gonna give up on PP yet. No, but you gotta keep PP in your heart. <laughs> you gotta keep PP in your heart, and I do. <laughs> do I do. I always love her, but Owen's taking her place for my favorite. FBA I love Owen too. She has. She's she's a shit dude. She fucking puts. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah, her, uh, it's crazy. It's it's hilarious. Not hilarious, I guess, but I mean, it really is the idea of like, oh, you know, those older. It's like it's like the older dudes that can't drive far but can putt from downtown. That's how she play. That's her strengths. Yeah, she can't drive far, but she can fucking make them from everywhere. She's and consistent. she was very consistent with it. Absolutely. So. We'll see if she, I'm. She'll definitely. I'm, I can only assume she'd pull off a win this year somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Holland Hanley. There's, there's my. If anybody in the FBO, well, I don't know. Holland Hanley's becoming a real favorite of mine. Not only because I like her instructional videos. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> I think she's got all the tools to be. Yeah. A top, like top one, two, three, like um. Let's just say Kristen's up there and nobody's touching her. I think Holland Hanley's either two or three. Yeah. Like, at the end of the season, I think she's she's got everything. She's got I'm, all the tools. For sure. She does. I'm with you. I, I agree with that. Definitely. Evelina Solonen, fourth place, tied fourth place with Haley King. Mm -hmm. uh, not very surprising to see Haley King. And I guess at this point, not very surprising to see Evelina too. Dude, she has cleaned up the fucking putting this year. She has. 100% is looking a lot better. And, of course, after a win at chess.com to see her top 10 finish and yeah. be in contention. Well, she, in contention, meaning 10 strokes off of first <laughs> place. So She should maybe like try to help her buddy out when it comes to putting. Fair. Henna. <laughs> That's tough. That was also very tough. It to hurt. It hurt my feelings. Like I felt sorry for her when she four putted that one hole. Where like did she end up. It was. Uh, that was hard to watch. It was like that was. There's just some things that are like hard to watch. Like A B at the European Open. Like I, I was just that some and I I love Corey Ellis. So I was like kind of happy that he threw it out twice. But after that, I was just like, come on, baby. Keep one in. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, dude. You can do it. Come on, Val. Yeah, I get that. Uh, Ev yeah, Evelina, I don't, or not Evelina, but Henna. That's tough. <clears throat> I don't know that, and you know that has to fuck with her, dude. Oh yeah, for sure. Because you know people are giving her shit about it. Oh yeah, that's got to be a tough one. Henna, to I don't know. We how love to... you, and we're pulling for you, and we're sending you positive vibes. Mm -hmm. Go see a fucking sports psychologist. There you go. Something, it's, dude. It's not. It's not something physical. It yeah. can't be a disc golf shrink. A disc golf shrink. You go see yeah, the disc dude. golf shrink. A fucking disc golf. Shrink. Yeah. <laughs> Better help. Discgolf dot com. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> you see them. They'll sure. They'll get any kind of uh, thoughts of whatever it is that's stifling her. Whatever's hurting her. It feels like she's holding on to them for so like for too long, and she's yanking them right. That's where a lot yeah. of her misses are, right? Yeah. And it's like crazy off yeah. when she's off, too. It's like she goes to throw it and then tries to hold on to it. <laughs> she's like, no, 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 wait, wait. Yeah, shit. something, seriously. Yeah. Like, a lot of them are like way right and like look like she tried to right. st like stop or something. I don't know. 
and I'm I'm not one that even I I can't judge anybody's putt. My putts, whoa, <laughs> but like she, I know that there's no way that she didn't spend her all her whole off season working on her putt. Oh, like, that had to be number no one. And you can see she has a good putt. You can see that she has it. So. It has to be in her head, and we, I mean, we're pulling. I'm pulling for her, man. I want her to get that shit together because she can throw the fuck out of a frisbee, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Evelina, obviously, uh, like I said, tied with Haley King for fourth place, and then right under Hannah Blomroos. Oh, so, so she's she's still top ten. Uh, still top ten, uh, eight down. So even with those putting woes, yeah. Whoa, was, hell yeah. And which, by the way, I, I didn't get to watch all the FPO, so I don't really know how many she had, you know, or. There's no, but I can only imagine from what I saw, it was like, man, still struggling with that. That's tough. Uh, then of course under Hannah, you got well, she was tied with Ella Hansen. Under Hannah. Under Hannah. <laughs> under, <laughs> Hannah. Uh, under her Blom Roos. Uh, <laughs> and then you got Natalie Ryan at six down. Natalie Ryan was on my uh, was on my fantasy. So she, some of these names definitely helped me out in the fantasy world. Uh, Missy Gannon, uh, Lique Lorenzen, or Luke Lucky. I never fucking know. How to say I just call her Lucky. Lucky. Bradley Williams, gal. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of shitty. No, yeah. No. No. We don't. I just call her Lucky, but I think that's what Bradley calls her. But I think her name is Lique. Lique. And you got Paige Pierce down here. Also, P-P. look at this. The score separation between 10th and 11th. From uh, four under at ten uh, tenth place to f- three over in eleventh. Wow! Seven strokes. Seven strokes, and you got Valerie Mandu. Just a few names to mention: Valerie Manduano, Juliana Corver tied eleventh. Hell yeah! At plus three, she's a baller. Still JK fucking. JK is a baller. Still out there fucking 50, killing. Fifty something. Yeah, has to be everybody. I don't really know. No, age, I'm pretty sure she's like be. fifty-one. Uh, she beat Paige Pierce. Paige Pierce six over. Yeah, I mean, dude, I thought it was going to be to go to F, to go to MPO now. I thought it was going to be the European sweep, dude. Because I just watched Kristen win, then I'm watching fucking uh, Nick Loss. Nick Loss. Nick Loss. I fig- I I thought he was gonna take it. Yeah, I was positive. I was he like, was this balling. fucking yeah, because he's already been playing good and he's I mean has been playing well. And I was like, these fucking Europeans was... are going to come over here of all places in Texas. <laughs> like it's the fucking Alamo. <laughs> he was thinking some big ones. Some big yes. daddies. He was putting them in, man. Fucking right. Did and you see any throw-ins from Greg Barsby, by the way? I seen, he was yeah. throwing some in, too. The throw-in God, dude. Yeah. The throw-in God. Uh, whenever Nicholas threw it on, what hole did it hit the gate on? 16, 15, I 16, I, I think. I can't remember the holes at Lake But he went, he went deep over, you know, and he went OB, and they had a gate, like a retaining gate, you know, to keep the hands back. It hit, like, those gates are probably 10-foot sections, I would say. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's so there's only things that go down to the ground every 10 foot. It hit one of the, the legs that holds the gate up. Kicked it back in bounds. Really? Yeah. I didn't see and whenever that. Whenever that happened, I was like, oh, he's, I was like, that's just, he's going to win. Yeah. That's, that's just luck. You know yeah. what I mean? It's going in his favor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's, but, and then, you know, get closer to the end, uh, he got to end up getting a bogue, but, um, then it looked like we might have a three way fucking playoff. And I was like, oh, yeah. That's something I've never seen is a three way in disc golf. <laughs> I've never seen a three way playoff. Really? I never have. I don't think there was one Saturday at oh, our tournament. Yeah, at the tournament we played, that's yeah. true. But uh, yeah, it's. I I thought for sure I was like, man, we're gonna get some extra DG. Yeah. Didn't work didn't. out that way. No. Turns out he fell out. Luke Humphreys looked Jumped like he up. was gonna secure it. <laughs> Couldn't hang. Gannon went ahead. And took yeah. It. Yeah. That was uh that was that was exciting. So I would have shit my pants if. Luke Humphreys would have thrown it in from however far away he, he was. gave it a bid. Gave it a great fucking bid. He sure did. That would have, that would have drove it to playoff. Hell yeah, dude. <clears throat> yeah, he tried that. Um, <clears throat> that shot he had that went out of bounds. His second shot, or I guess you would call it an up shot on eighteen. 
I thought he had that. Like, once it started coming down, it was pretty obvious that there was a chance that it was going to be. But, like, I don't know, man. His tee shot, he yanked it. Yeah. He yanked it between two trees that he wasn't trying to do. Yeah, yeah. And Sneaky. whenever whenever he did that, I thought, oh, he's there's no way. Yeah, he's winning. He's winning. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I always think when somebody gets lucky, they're obviously going to Sometimes gonna it feels win. that way. Even when yeah. you're playing, not necessarily winning, but if you're playing a good round, it's like, man, a lot of things went in my favor, yeah. and I threw some good shots. Yeah. So. But he ended up going OB and then gaining 480, he said. Um, That's his shot. Yeah, 480 from outside. Out, 480. Had to put it over a tree. I mean, this... 20, 25 foot. That's a hilarious thing to say. He said, he was like, it was a very comfortable shot that I have. And so I just, it was, it was a no brainer just to throw it. I'm like yeah. a very comfortable 500 foot hyzer shot. Did, this not even hyzer, like a force over. Like, oh, he like four. Yeah. And then, yeah. It was like in, in high, like how do you, how do they throw it? So nose up or <laughs> it's so high. I, don't, I guess you can't say nose up because. You could throw it high and, nose and down. still nose down. Yeah. I guess that's the trick to it, right? Right. But how do you throw? Well, that's it how so Ger- high? Girthy throws too, right? His nose angle is yeah. He's down I and... heard that he gets, his nose angle is like six six percent or something like that, or six degrees. I'm sorry. Okay, I was about to say. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> six, yeah. You see a lot degrees. of formulas he, in my head. He too. averages six degrees down nose angle. That's what I've what I've heard. Okay. But uh, I just don't see how they can throw it so high and push 480, 500 foot. It's just it blows my mind. I don't I don't know how they do it either. So but, so good. They're so good. Yeah. <laughs> it turns out they've just uh, they've gotten really good at it, and now they're touring and they're professionals at it. That's why they do it. They're so. Good. I don't know how they do it though. They're so hard. <laughs> yeah i don't i don't know but uh yeah it's like how do you throw so far <clears throat> you just gotta throw harder well and i'll tell you what else was huge it was ganon birch putt on 17 i mean he that 17 hole is it's i don't want to say it's crappy because it's a cool hole no yeah i liked it but like man it's so scary like every shot coming in on a hyzer onto that hill i mean there's a good chance that you're gonna it's gonna kick up and roll down. Ob's right at the bottom of the fucking hill. Yeah. Like that's that's a tough ass hole. That's a separating hole too. Absolutely. <clears throat> right at the end. Yeah, eighteen's not as much of a separating hole right. as you, I would think. That I would like honestly. I like that hole eighteen to be like a risk reward. And like seventeen is. Well, seventeen's <laughs> well, not, not really but... risk reward. It's kind of like luck. Right. Because I mean, you could throw damn near a perfect shot. And it come down at just a, a smidge of the wrong angle when catch a roll and roll OB. And somebody could throw one, a terrible shot, catch a roll, and it just curl Check up, up before, yeah. So it's more luck than it is. Nate Sexton threw a forehand on that. That's crazy. Yeah. Towards, going towards the OB. Absolutely. Like going, that's trust. Yeah. I mean, they have that golf green on the left. Yeah. That's OB. So that keeps everybody really throwing it from, you know, the hyzer in. Or if that golf green wasn't OB, then everybody would be throwing it forehand. But, yeah, that was crazy. Like, uh, Yeah. Nanners. Yeah. Uh, I'll go ahead and run through the MPO. You got Gannon Burr, first place. Doy. Uh, tied second place, Nicholas Antala and Luke Humphreys. Sorry, better luck next year, Luke. Yeah, that was that bummed a lot of people out. Too. Everybody was pulling for Luke. Everyone was pulling for Luke. I was indifferent. I was whatever. I like Luke Humphreys. All right. I actually don't know a lot about Luke Humphreys other than he just looks really cool. Yeah. He, other than like a- he dresses like he's just like a hipstery dude, and he has his dog. Other than that, like I don't really Hogan. know Hogan. Yeah, yeah, and it, who has his own Instagram page too, by the way. Hogan has his own Instagram. He should. The more you know. Yeah. yeah. Why wouldn't he? Of course. But yeah, actually, uh, I mean, I th- I thought it would be cool. It'd be a cool story. I yeah. Think, you know. I think it's his hometown, right? Or he's from that area for sure. I don't know that. I just I, I knew he's Texas boy. But yeah. But a uh, yeah. prodigy. Everybody was a little people. I don't. Do people not like Gannon, or are they just pulling for Luke because he's not up there a lot, and he's a big it's probably a lot of underdog uh, thing uh, to it. I mean, right? with the with the the skins matches, him hosting the skins matches, he's kind of a big 
He's a presence in yeah, this golf. So yeah, people... so maybe that's why everybody was pulling for him. I don't. It's. I don't think people don't like. They don't not like. Gannon Burr, they just were pulling for him. It's kind of like an underdog thing. Yeah. And I think a lot of people do like Luke Humphreys because, like you said, he's kind of like a personality yeah. in the world now. Seems like a cool dude. Seems like a cool dude. Seems like he'd pull a guitar out around a fire yeah. and play. Probably have a, you know, have a, maybe share a little bit of something with some folks or something. Oh, for sure. I bet yeah. he's all down with sharing. I bet he is. I bet he always. Always shares. Yeah. <laughs> Never hoards. No, he shares it with the class. Yeah. <clears throat> Luke Humphreys tied with second, of course, with Niklas Antala, where it almost became, like I said, the European fucking sweep. European invasion. The European invasion, dude. The I'm glad. Beat. I'm glad Gannon Burr. By God, Gannon American Burr. <laughs> yeah. Out. Yeah, not if goddamn Gannon <laughs> Burr has something to say about it. Gannon put on his damn... Get him bird, put on his spurs, and kick the hell out of them Europeans. So you get the fuck back to your country. <laughs> Texas. <laughs> Around here in Texas. He fucking holds his belt buckle while he's talking. <laughs> Texas. <laughs> Anthony Barella. Hey, B. Tied fourth place with Mason Ford. Also, Mason watching uh, Mason Ford play this weekend was, was awesome. awesome. Yeah. No shit. I, th- that's another one of those players I don't know a ton about, but watching his... Uh, his uh pre uh his interview before the round and he was talking about his game plan and they were like you know do you f- do you like being on lead card to like feed off other people's energy and he's just like that's not really my way he's like i'm not like ricky in that regard where he like he kind of uses that as like fuel for the fire he's like i'm much more just in my own head trying to make good shots and just have fun playing this guy and i'm like yeah that's just, cool just cool dude yeah yeah just cool dude uh, Mason Ford, though, the most fucking Texas-sounding name I've ever heard, dude. <laughs> so it does make sense he's from Texas. Uh, Chris Dickerson. See, Dick. Our boy. See, Dick. Whooped. Almost had the damn course record. Yep. Almost shot the 11 under, or was it... Tw- mm, was that t- was it tied? That was tied, he might have. Yeah, he might have shot 11, but he was, he was right there. But he didn't birdie anything after, like, the 11th hole or something crazy. He started out like fucking. If you look at his last round card, it's fucking wild. It's yeah, it is. Hot, he, hot, 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 yeah, hot. he birdied Burn. seven out of nine holes the first yeah. round, and then the second round, you're right. He only got three bird. Or, sorry, the I'm sorry, the the front nine, seven out of nine holes birdied. Uh, the back nine, three out of yeah. nine. So yeah, so, kind of slowed down there, kind of chilled out. Um, let's see who else. Chrissy Dick, of course. Ezra Robinson. <sighs> Top 10 finish, but not good enough. Better than Isaac. He didn't make the cut. That's true. There are a few people. There's that a lot the of cut. big names that didn't make the cut. Yeah. P. McBee. P. McBeach didn't make the cut. Conrad. Conrad. Simon Lazat. Yeah. I mean, yeah. a lot. Well, there's, uh, there's probably more. <laughs> yeah. Ezra Robinson uh, tied seventh with Greg Barsby and Kyle Klein, by the way. Um, Greg Barsby, getting to watch him on the lead card. I haven't got you haven't gotten to see a lot of them here lately. Uh, you know, after World Championship, it kind of felt like Greg was on a heater for a little for like the next year, maybe less after that. But then after that, it just kind of died off. And you don't get to see a lot of them on these lead cards. So it was really cool for me to. I'm old school Bars Bar- Yeah, dude. Who <laughs> who doesn't like Triple G Greg? Triple Triple G Greg, yeah, good 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 good. Oh yeah, because there's so many fucking G's in his name. Yeah, he's got two G's at the end. He does. Triple G Greg, uh, uh, tie with Kyle Klein, dude. I thought this was Kyle Klein's tournament in the beginning. I thought he wouldn't let anyone win. He was making fucking everything in the dude, beginning. Dude, his putt, his putt looks way better this year. He's gonna be hard. He's yes, just, he's gonna make some ripples. Yeah, and that third year. and that third round at um. The uh, fucking Brazos. Brazers. Brazers, e- Brazers East. <laughs> the third round there, dude, he was. He was making putts from fucking everywhere. I was convinced that he wasn't going to let it uh, let it slide down from under him. But he did. Uh, then you got... <laughs> but he did. But instead... <laughs> tied for 10th place under Kyle Klein is Richard Wysocki, Hammis, Casey White. Yeah. 
Casey White. Okay. No, no, no longer Simon's little sidekick anymore. No longer Simon's little fuck toy. I, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Casey White, uh, Joel Freeman, and Nathan Sexton. So that was a funny thing, too. Sexton, Uliberry, and Germ all, oh, like, yeah. all in top 10 at one point or top 15. It was fun watching Sexton play, too. It's always good to Absolutely. watch those guys that we kind of we don't get to see as much, like, during the rounds like we get to see plenty of them as the, you know or we get to hear commentating or doing the practice rounds or it's fun watching them out there competing you know yeah giving us old guys a little which i mean yeah. i'm still way older to say and i think he's gonna be 40 ne- next year and i'm gonna be 45 so i've got a few years on him but it is fun watching the older guys come out there and represent a little bit absolutely that's the listening to germ when they interviewed him speak on like the possibility of playing masters next year you know he's like i'm getting older like 10 20 golf isn't winning tournaments yeah that's crazy you know he's like I, he's like my rating hasn't changed in like the last 12 years it's just i can't win like i can't win anymore because back, everyone's too good back to what i said it's, yeah. it's getting it's getting good like like i like i said the 12 time getting climb on. people won't call him the goat people won't call Macbeth the goat and that's we can. I'm not arguing that they're not right now. Yeah. But they're not. They're not going to be the best players of all time. They're not the like. They might have the most wins. There's going to be someone. You're they saying there's the going to be someone worlds. shatter the records. No, there, no, that there won't be anybody shatter twelve world championship. No, right. that's that that'll there's never no be way. broken because because all the, the competition's going to yeah. be way better than it was whenever. So you don't think Paul can win six more? I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't think he's got six more no, under his belt? I, he might have one or two. I mean, I was, what do you think? It was six more. That's that's going to put him up at like 45 years old, right? That six more. If he won know. six if he, in a fucking row. If he won six in a row, no, you know he'd be. How, how old is he? He's like thir- my age, 33 maybe. No, I don't think Paul so. McBeth. Yeah. No, he's he's 40. He is not 40. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but uh, like so, if he wins one every two years, that means he's gonna have to play twelve more years and win a. He says that he would love to still be competing in ten years. Well, yeah, I heard him say that. Love to and fucking winning worlds is goddamn yeah. two different things. Yeah, well, shit in one hand and <laughs> wish that you'll win in worlds in the other, and we'll see which one fills up quicker. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 you know, Paul's great, Kid Climo's great, but. And the, their records, there might not be anybody else ever get six again. Yeah. Twelve, and I mean, that might be uh, the second record, or seven, or eight, or however much it Paul ends up winning. But they they won't be the best. Like, you could take them in their prime and put some of these kids that are coming up in their prime, and the, the kids that are coming up will smoke them. Hmm. Yeah. That's just my opinion. Some of them, maybe, right? I'm not saying all of them. I'm yeah. saying the best. Right, like a Gannon Burr. Like a Gannon Burr. Kyle Gannon Burr is nowhere near his prime. Right, he's that's not. true. He's still young, huh? Or what if this is his prime? I, I don't think it is. Yeah. I mean, it's possible. But there's some of, these, seen. some of these people that, some of these kids that are playing now and shooting, you know, that are 980 rated at fucking 13, 14 years old. Yeah, it's annoying. It's, it's very annoying. It's annoying, first but off. They're going to be. They're gonna be ridiculous. Yeah, it's just all it's all in the starting a train. It's funny, like a kid early. And... It's funny, like being a kid and being like a very successful disc golfer at a young age, and then just but you're still young, so you just grow out of it. You're like, I don't know, it's kind of lame. <laughs> just kind of throw it away. Oh, that frisbee I don't shit. Like, I don't like yeah, I went and money. dominated it for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. I'm out. Yeah, there ain't enough money in yeah. that. There's not money in it. Yeah, you got to be a fucking. You got to go to school to be an engineer as well if you're going to be a pro <laughs> disc golfer. You know, you got to have something to fall back on. You got to have something to fall back on. But guess what? If I'm not going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year playing disc golf, then Heinberg's an engineer. Right? Yeah, I believe so. Andrew Fish is an engineer. There's a few of them that are. But uh, yeah, they drive trains. Yeah, dude, <laughs> dude, you never seen him with the little hats. <laughs> He's like, hey, I'm an engineer. <laughs> Imagine Calvin being a train engineer. He's got the strapped head on. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, look, someone laying on the tracks. <laughs> He's like, please move. Runs him over. <laughs> oh, shit. 
Uh, you want to talk about our tournament though? Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> uh, I, I think you. I mean, I was very proud of you. I thought you did a great job. Thank you, buddy. And uh, I wasn't so proud of me. I wasn't proud of the way I played. Or my problem was. Let's talk about you. Okay, okay. You had you had a you had two really good rounds. Two, pre- yeah, yeah. I was very happy with the the first. I ended up getting fourth place. As we stated last week, it was a trophy only event, and I gotta say, playing in MA two, me personally, I don't. I'm I'm ne- my head's never really there for the win. I'm not like, oh, I'm gonna win. I have the possibility of winning. It's mostly just trying to get an above nine hundred rating. That's literally all I give a shit about for the most part. Halfway through the second round, though, pulling out my phone, looking at the scores, and seeing I was two off the lead, I was like, I want that fucking trophy. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of wanting that trophy. And uh, I didn't get it, though. I ended up falling short, getting fourth place, no trophy, no fucking $20 gift card. <laughs> no, nothing. To buy old ice bowls, stamp discs, <laughs> nothing. So... <laughs> But it was fun. Uh, we had a good time. You know, it was rainy as shit there for a little bit. It got very muddy. Yeah, conditions were not the best. Conditions were not the best. I do think one of the reasons why I played so well is because it the rain, the weather didn't affect me as much as maybe it affected other people. I truly, like, I'm not just trying to be like, <laughs> I am impervious to the fucking <laughs> impervious to the rain. But, like, I don't know. I just, it, I, I had plenty of towels. I brought plenty of towels. I had some hot hands, kept my shit dry. It wasn't very windy the first round, so I don't know. I just happened to play pretty good, I guess. But yeah, well, that's I mean, pretty. That's pretty much it. What was your rating? So, like, your first round was hot. Yeah, it was like nine thirty three first round, and the second round was nine fifteen, I think. So yeah, yeah two ratings. I was proud good, of. Yeah. yeah, I was happy. Up, happy with them, and uh, didn't get my didn't get my overall rating. Uh, up to 900 but like a, we'll you're on the out. way you're I'm, on the way I'm dude. only up and up dude yeah i'm trying i'll get yeah, there. you're on the way my my rating didn't move at all yeah but uh my my rounds it i learned something from this i learned a few things from this tournament uh and it's not anything that i didn't already know it's something that i've been working on both things is something i've been working on three things actually but i gotta get a better forehand Right off the bat, um, it my forehand now is night and day better than what it was a year from a year ago, so I'm on my way. But I need a forehand. I I need uh, I need to be confident in my forehand. Out outside of you know, if even to, you know two hundred, I'm not confident. But uh, I need a forehand. I need to work on my forehand, and I need to work on my mental game. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the two things. Um, I started okay, like I'm pretty sure I was in the lead for like the first four holes of the first round, and then then I I bogeyed, and uh, it was a bad decision. Like uh, I could have no, I'm sorry, I double bogeyed, I double bogeyed. You I could you... I could have easily bogeyed. Um, and walked away, but let me see here. No, I'm I'm I bogeyed. I'm lying. I'm tearing this story up. Um, I could have. No, I double bogeyed. <laughs> yeah, no, I double bogeyed because I easily, I uh, had a, a hit first available, and then I had a pretty like it kicked bad. Had a pretty decent, but I I, I could not get a good up shot. But then on my third shot, I could have easily used a little flick and had a easy bogey tap in. But instead, I was like, I want this par. And I tried, to, toss tried to do a any fucking stupid shit. Didn't get over on it and left myself like a 40-footer coming back up a hill. Missed it and ended up double bogey. Sure. And I told myself right then, I was doing very well. I was like, okay, that was my... I always try to tell myself, you want to make one bad... De- you're going to make a bad decision, it's going to cost you a stroke. Right. I always... I, I figured I shouldn't, but I was like, that's, that's your one bad decision right there. Let's go, you know. 
Probably the next hole fine. Probably the next couple of holes fine. And was in a good, still in a good mindset. And then I bogeyed a hole. Then I bogeyed another hole. And then, like, on the third one, I was like, it's over. Right. Just threw it away. <laughs> I was like, like, fuck, fuck it. Fuck it. Yeah, I was like, it's over. Yeah. I can't do it, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I, I started, like, bad self-talking, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, negative self-talking. And once I started doing that, I think I bogeyed, like, six holes in a row before I parred one. Like, I really did. I bogeyed six yeah. in a row. And uh, I... I I didn't show much emotion on the card. I was still a good card mate and everything. Uh, yeah, yeah. But then when we finished and I looked at the rating and it was like an 856, I, I melted down. I was like, fuck. Pissed. Yeah. Fuck this. I'm not playing this shit. I'm going home. I don't even want to play the second round. My hip was hurting. Yeah. It was slick as fuck. So everything, I, anything that wasn't on T pad, it was hurting my fucking hip real bad because I was trying to brace hard and maybe like i don't know if i was trying to hold my leg still where i wouldn't slip out or what but my hip was killing me and then uh i fucking talked to the wife and she's like shut the fuck up because i was telling her i was like i'm not fucking playing no yeah. more she goes i don't give a shit <laughs> she was like shut up you're gonna fucking play this go fucking have fun and i was like yeah, she's right. She's definitely So right. I got in the fucking better headspace and come out and shot a 9 I shot the hot round for MA3. Hell yeah. The second round. And I think it was 907, 908, yeah. something like that. Ended up, but this is the fucked up part. Since I thought I, there was no chance, I never fucking once looked at the scores. That's something I need to correct. I need to at least look at the scores because we tapped out on our last hole. And I'd been playing kind of reckless even like not even not even caring you know maybe that's the reason i was playing better right but uh there's probably a few strokes i could have easily cleaned up and uh when we tapped out the last hole we pulled up the scores and i was one stroke off the fucking lead <laughs> off only you <laughs> and to mention it was a trophy only event oh yeah the other people in the lead there was three other people in the lead yeah so i was out of a trophy right yeah off the bat. you missed a four-person playoff <laughs> I, had, I had no idea that I, I was battling back that hard like because the conditions were shit like yeah. were it was hard to tell how well you were playing right? yeah yeah same same like i, I was pl- the way i played the second round which was worse than the first round but like like you said it was much more it was windier and it was definitely like it fucking gross it poured like it absolutely piss poured down in between our rounds so it, it was hard for me to like I, was, I felt like i wasn't playing as well as i was that second round and then i guess everyone me else too. just felt the same way yeah, because the rating showed and it was actually better than what i thought yeah, it was i had be. i had no idea that i was even close to catching any of those people because i was like what six strokes down after the first round i think tied yeah. for seventh or something like that it was ready to throw it all away ready to quit yeah. <laughs> you know it really took my wife to tell me shut the fuck up yeah. before i was like hey you're right this is stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna quit fucking playing it's dumb as fuck so you think first round whenever you went whenever you blew up the first time and you were like fuck this shit and then that's whenever you started eating shit playing the the back nine or whatever it was yeah man you hear people talk about it and i've thought about it a lot since saturday and it's it's um it's not this my mental game is not up to par like it's it's just not i'm not the mental game's not there and it's not just the mental game like it's not just with this golf it's like with my life you know what i mean i'm i uh, i'm very bad at like self-confidence is I don't even have any, to be honest. Uh, but the self confidence is low. It's really low on the disc golf course. Yeah. And the negative self talk. Like, I don't have any confidence that I do anything right. And then if I do fuck up, I'll I'll sit there and I'll think about it. And it'll eat me. I'm talking about it in real life. Right, right. And right. It's like it, it goes right on to the disc golf course, too. So it doesn't surprise me that my mental game's trash because my mental health is trash. <laughs> So, you know what I mean? So, it, right, it doesn't right. surprise me, but it, I, it's something I need to work on. Um, you always hear people talk about negative self-talk, you know? Don't get confused with negative self-suck. <laughs> negative, I don't even know. There's got to be negative to self-sucking. Yeah. But I can't think of <laughs> No, dude. If you can self-suck, that seems like a positive, <laughs> positive thing to me. Anyway, I mean, yeah. maybe taste. Yeah, taste probably be pretty yeah. rough, but even that, you just spit it right out and <laughs> yeah. you go right back to yeah. it. Yeah, but negative self-talk. 
Yeah. It's not good. And not it's good. definitely not good on the course. It, I mean, it, you really, um, it really can talk, you can talk yourself into like playing bad. Yeah. You really can. And, and it's, it's crazy to think that the, the mental game is that important, but it's, it's 100% as, in, as important as any other part of the game. Yeah. It really is. Like, um, couple of my putts I should have stepped away from because something would happen in that course. There's areas there where it's very, the holes are really close to each other and there's people moving around and cars going by the road. And there's a couple of putts that were riding in that area. I should have stepped back, took a breath Waited. and then went back and addressed it. But instead I was like, Hey, fuck it. And I missed them. And there were putts that I normally make, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, it, all in all, I shot above my rating, yeah. so that's a that's a that's a great. Yeah, it's a positive. Um, and I know what I need to work on forehand. And like I said, and quit throwing the shit away halfway through the round. Yes, just being like, Kay. yeah, and just being concentrate more on being positive self talk. Yeah, instead of negative self talk, and maybe. You got to do a little self sucking. Yeah, I mean, maybe if you self suck yourself before the round, it make it put me in a more positive headspace. Absolutely, you'd be able to perform a little bit better. Yeah, probably. Yeah, or you, if, if you can't do it, I'll hook you up. Oh, you know what I'm saying, hey, let me ask you this: If you could self suck, okay, I've thought about this a lot too. Do you well, think does it make you gay? No, no, no. We know it isn't. No. It doesn't make you gay. No, me doing like whatever. No, but. Do you think you would like the whole like gagging and like this sloppy top? You know what yeah, I mean? Oh, you think I would, would like you do pull that out to all the <laughs> <laughs> Or would it just be like. You think a, I would like <laughs> use my hand like this and shit? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, do you think you'd be. <laughs> like where it gets to the point where I'm like not focusing on how good it feels, but I'm like focusing on my technique on <laughs> yeah. sucking my dumb yeah. dick. Yeah. Do you think that's a thing? Uh, for some, maybe. I don't know. That's hilarious. <laughs> or is it this maintenance that feels a little better? Maintenance? What do you mean? Like, like sometimes whenever I rub one out. Uh, right, it's, it's just like it's to get it out. Yeah. You gotta, sometimes you gotta, you can't think clear with Dude, a full suck. if people that can self-suck do that for maintenance every time, like that's the only way they masturbate is with their mouth. No, sure. <laughs> with their face. Not. Oh, so you think it's just like a special... <laughs> Hey, it's a, I've had a good work at, week at work. Yeah, go my birthday, I'm gonna suck myself. I don't know. I don't really. <laughs> I've known a person who claimed that they could do it. Really? Absolutely. High school friend. No, I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> no, no. A high school friend claimed that he could do it, but I never really picked his brain about it. That's a good question. Like, is it just like a once ever so often? Like, yeah. Oh yeah, it's been a great week at work, or you know, whatever. You got a big time. raise, or yeah, or like once you once you do it once, you're like I'm never I'm never rubbing yeah. one out again. And then you just really start focusing <laughs> on like blowjob skills, and you start watching videos of like people giving blowjobs, and you're like studying just to see, just to get better at blowing yourself. Notes. Yeah, that's uh, fucking great. I don't know. I don't, I, I've always wondered like people that could do it if they go like this straight <laughs> sloppy top. This blah, blah, blah. Right. Or, or if it's just like a this quick... maintenance, yeah, like you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah, because I feel like if if it's just like masturbating, you would probably only just like you said, no, nothing special. It's maintenance. Yeah, I don't have to use my hands. Yeah, you know, not a excess amount of spit. Uh, not <laughs> that noise. Just keep you know half to one quarter of the penis in my mouth, just enough to get it off. Yeah. Probably, I would probably be more like that. I'd probably do that. So. I'm going to say most people that can self-suck probably just focus on the getting themselves off part. Yeah. Whereas... I don't, uh, say I don't think I could do that. You would want to focus on... No, I just don't think I could do it. I don't think I'm flexible enough. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't, I don't think, think I can. I don't think I'll ever be flexible enough. No, like I said, I'll help you out, though, bro. <laughs> yeah. I'll push you down. Yeah. I'm going to need help jerking off. Can you suck me <laughs> off? <laughs> No. Oh, we got a we have a uh, story from on tour this week. We do have a Big story. Austin, Austin, Texas. Let's story. end it with that. We'll end it with a story from Austin, Texas, where the tour uh, stop is next at. 
the Open of Austin, of course. Open at Austin. Yeah. Austin Open. Yeah. Open at Austin. Sure. Uh, the headline reads, Woman allegedly broke into North Austin home, ate sandwich. <laughs> That's the that's the article. That's they the fucked it up. They fucked it up. I can tell you right now, they fucked it up. Yeah. It's just supposed to say, a woman breaks into Austin home and makes a sandwich. <laughs> this is a typo. Yeah. This is Texas. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> woman breaks into home and does what she's supposed to do. <laughs> Yeah, and it shows the guy that's telling the story and his big old hat. It's one of those Texas Ranger looking. Yeah. yeah, the article reads: uh, A woman was arrested Saturday afternoon for allegedly entering a home in North Austin and eating a sandwich. Uh, according to an arrest affidavit, a resident of the house saw Adrian Romanda Cruz. I'm getting out names Ooh. described as possibly transient by police. Hmm. Never heard that transient. I've never heard them use the term possibly transient whenever it's describing someone. Uh, but also place walking around the kitchen of the home, writing on a notepad and eating a sandwich. So she was like taking notes, just like, hmm. maybe she was taking notes on the sandwich. <laughs> the resident then observed the woman leaving through the front door. Police say on the notebook left inside the home, uh, the name Adrian Miranda Cruz was written on several pieces of paper. <laughs> Another resident of the home searched for that name online, and it matched the description of the suspect. So the she fucking went into their house, made a sandwich, made a sandwich, and then just wrote her name everywhere. <laughs> just let her know. And just let, let her know. know who she it was me. <laughs> it's almost like when you open your car, like when you ding someone's car and they're not around, so you leave them a note under their. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah it was pretty much that. There's like, sorry, I broke in. And, <laughs> I had to make a sandwich. Sorry, the stolen items were literally two pieces of white bread, mayonnaise, and ham and cheese. That's nuts. That is a weird story. There could that could have been a crazier story. That is a weird fucking news headline, though. Yeah, they fucked it up. <laughs> they fucked the woman. Up. Yeah, make sandwich. What's the fucking news? <laughs> Happens every day at my house. Yeah, what are you talking about? What's next? Woman folds laundry. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> Dumbest news out of Austin, Texas. <laughs> European goes to Texas and kicks all Texans' asses in disc golf tournament. <laughs> all right, let's go. Let's head we out. We pumped out a little bit over an hour. So, hey, everybody. Like. Subscribe. Subscribe. Dom, scribe. Dom, scribe. Follow. Tell share, your friends. All that good shit. Swing by Heiser Creep, UCV Pod. To get 15% off your purchase. Check out Trev's shirt. He's got the Heiser Creep shirt on. Doi. Doi. But uh, those are our boys. We love y'all. Love you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.